Hey, my name is Steven. I'm a creative director based out of Salt Lake City, Utah. And today, I just wanted to talk about quickly three tips that I wish I knew when I started my career in video editing and videography. So tip number one, audio quality can be more important than video quality. To get my point across, imagine an interview that you're shooting or you have the footage that somebody has shot of an interview and it's just beautiful footage, right? They put it on a slider, it's got the parallax going, they have these nice over the shoulder and the person being interviewed or giving the testimonial or talking about the subject in a documentary is super passionate and you, you're just being drawn in by their emotion and by the storytelling, except for the fact that the audio is clipped and every single thing that they're saying is peaking and it sounds like crap. That video, despite all the effort that the DP put into it, is now ruined. That viewer experience is now ruined because the audio itself was bad. And so I wanna make sure that you guys realize that. Audio quality is so important to bring the viewer in. If you have bad audio quality, if you haven't balanced it well on set, if you haven't run extensive mic checks where you can tell where where and when that person is gonna peak when they're speaking, then it can actually just ruin the entire video that you spent so much time on. So when you're doing a mic check on set, just make sure that you have them talk loud, make sure you have them laugh and go through certain scenarios so that you know when they're talking or laughing and these events happen where their intonation spikes, that you're ready for it and you give yourself some buffer or at least that you can time when you can drop the gain. There's things like that that are very important that we don't think about when we're DPs on set because we have a million things running through our head. And for you video editors, the tip that I would give is the EQ in post is super important depending on what you're EQing. If it's a woman, make sure you're balancing out the highs and the mids. But if it's a man, make sure you're not boosting the bass too much. For example, if you boosted my voice, which is naturally bassy, then it just becomes muddied and it just honestly doesn't sound good. It becomes very unclear what I'm saying and it, Something is off for the viewer. Tip number two, microphone type and placement is crucial. So above my head, I have a boom that I've been speaking into this whole time, a Sennheiser MK416. And then on my chest now, this magical lav has appeared and it is a Sennheiser G4. They're both incredible microphones, but I want you to know that despite them being industry standards, really just depends on what you're doing to choose what microphone. Don't just use a lav for everything and don't just use a boom for everything. For example, if you're in a big room and there's a lot of noise, high ceilings, nothing on the floor, people are spread apart, the boom's gonna pick up a lot of ambient room noise, especially if the noise floor is pretty high. Booms sometimes just won't be a great choice for that. And you will have to put the lav on the subject. But then also keep in mind, if you're putting the lav on the subject, their clothes matter. For example, on a t-shirt, it's pretty hard depending on what type of collar you have and how tight the t-shirt is. Because, I mean, ideally you'd like to put the lav basically where my lav is right now, except inside, but then you have to use the skin tape. And you know, depending on how tight the shirt is, you could even just see it inside my shirt. So there's a lot of considerations that you need to make sure that you're crossing off the checklist of what is my subject wearing? If they're wearing a, a skin fitted, or form-fitted dress, boom mics tend to be a really good option because then you avoid the awkwardness of like, uh, string this lav mic in your clothes and I don't wanna touch you, right? Or for even men with a t-shirt, I'm always gonna use a boom mic because I don't necessarily like seeing the lav on my collar. But if you can control what that person's wearing and they're wearing a collared shirt because you asked them to, they're wearing you know, a nice button down or they have a jacket, something that you can slip the microphone in and do your best to hide it, that's ideal. So make sure you take that into account when you're inviting people onto set that you ask them to wear specific things for the microphones that you have and for the gear that you're using that day to record audio. And just so you can have a frame of reference of what each microphone sounds like back to back, I'm gonna play the unedited boot mic and then the unedited lav just so you know how they all sound. And last but not least, honestly, the most important in my mind. Tip number three is music makes mood. Why did I say that's the most important? Well, I'm just gonna do a quick test for you guys. Here's a short promo commercial I did for a nutrition sponsor of ours. 
I'm gonna play the song that I chose off Musicbed that I loved and I spent three hours finding because I wanted to make sure I found the perfect song that elicits the emotion that I wanted it to present to the sponsor. And then I'm gonna choose another song off Musicbed that is just a whatever song. And I want you to feel the emotion and see just how different the same exact shots feel with different music. So hopefully that's a good enough demonstration of what I mean by music makes mood. You have to choose the right song for the video that you're presenting to whoever you're presenting it to, the customer, the business, the client, whatever you wanna call them. There's a certain emotion that you have and that you wanna push forward when you're creating this story. But if you're not choosing the right song, then you're not gonna be able to tell the correct story all the way through. And it might work and it might feel okay, but viewers do notice. I think something that's really important to know is that people who aren't even trained in video will know when something feels off. They can watch a video with bad music on it and just be like, I can't put my finger on what is wrong with this video, but something is wrong and I don't like it. So it is very, very, very crucial for you to choose the right song for the right emotion and for the right mood that you're trying to present in the video. Anyways, I hope this all helps. The goal with my channel is to just be that person that's giving good advice that's helping video editors and videographers succeed in their career. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about this field, please let me know down below. That way I can know where to go with this channel because I have a ton of video ideas and even just this first video took me freaking forever just to figure out. It's like, I don't even know what I want. Where do I even start, right? So if you guys help me out and give me ideas of where to start, that would be amazing and would really help out this channel and help you guys out in the process as well. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time.